When was your first uh, touch with the story of um, uh, Maria Laiko? And when was it the point you decided to make a film about her story? But it was, in fact, it was quite accidental because uh, we, we started the film, in, in fact, uh, uh, from, from, this idea, from this little story that I read about when doing research for another project uh, about uh, this actress uh, who traveled to Soviet Russia to retrieve the child, uh, the gra gran her grandchild, who was born to uh, his, her daughter, uh, and, but the daughter died while giving the birth to the child. And uh, so that was the, the, the kind of a starting point, uh, this little story, which I just like, felt it's very powerful and, and touching but because of the child. But then it turns out that, that there is much more in the story, that there is like this uh, kind of a broader perspective that you, you can approach this uh, character as a certain looking glass through which you could see the kind of a whole dreadfulness of the particular historical period and yeah so so it developed uh, from from a little kind of a tiny fact that we learned while while researching for for another project uh, it it grew into the kind of a, this this larger larger uh, story about uh, persecutions about torturing about uh, regime that is uh, bloody and so on so on which is now, of course, if, and, and now we could say that it's even, uh, if we wanted it to become a, a warning from history, it became something else now because we kind of witness it, uh, it as a reality that is happening just next to us. Why you decided to make a feature film uh, about this material and uh, not a documentary? <laughs> the reason, uh, my, um, my, uh, my documentary films, they are mostly like, uh, uh, connected with today's subject, so basically, I, I like to be. Uh, I, I don't want. I don't like to make histo historical documentaries because I think that then then you have to only you can relate to the footage or, or any documents or sources that are coming from the past, but you cannot like be uh, part of the filming process, uh, part of the this this kind of a documenting. The reality, and in this case, because the story is a historical story, then uh, then that was a kind of a very deliberate choice to do a, a fiction because you then you can recreate, but in from from your author author's uh, perspective the, the the reality of the past. Maybe uh, you can tell us about the research process and how long was it. The, the research process was very broad. We, we, we approached different kind of historical sources. My, my own uh, experience uh, is that because I, my primary education is historian, so, so I'm always, I, I have this inner struggle between being truthful to history and, and, and at the same time making historical films. And, and that is one thing that is really so that that history and films doesn't go, do, do not go well together sometimes, you know, like because uh, uh, you cannot stay truthful to this kind of academical narrative of history when you are making films because you have the central character, you have like conflicts, different kind of conflicts. You 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 become unchronological. You change the chronology of of events. Uh, you also uh, need to have a dramaturgy in the film. So basically, that is. All, Everything that history doesn't have, and, and then, then, and you still have to make it. But, but anyway, so, so we, yeah, we did very broad research in different kinds of materials, mem memoirs, biographies, uh, um, the scientific research uh, on the issue, and so on, so on. So basically, it's, it, it has been a very um, broad research process, and uh, and also afterwards, uh, like. Uh, uh, shaping or, or finding, because of course, whenever you have a story like this, you have those gray zones, which the history doesn't tell you about. Uh, so and you need to fill them with something. And, and that is the territory for the filmmaker to come in. So you can fill it with your own ideas about what, what, what could have happened, uh, what are the kind of, a, uh, let's say, morals or ideas that you want to put in a film, because then you, you fill, them, fill these gaps, these gray zones with, with, with those. How much creative freedom do you have with such a historical material? 
I would say narrative wise, you don't have like a, a too big uh, freedom, uh, let's say so. Uh, but uh, because you, you, you try to, and also in this case, it's because the, the, the historical story is so rich and powerful that you don't even need to invent things for the purposes of the film because it already works as a film. Uh, but, um, but when it comes to, um, to the f style of the film or uh, actors playing or, or different other aspects that it's to do with the set or, or lighting or so there, there the artists can come in and, and, and do their job and it's uh, and at, for in this film we had different methods developed like how to work and to create the film as it is uh, on the screen right now. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the writing process. As I said, it's um, here the facts and already like, like these uh, the storylines developed uh, through just reading the historical sources. You just you see how it, things develop just like when 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 you are approaching these uh, historical texts or, or or research that has been done before. Um, but at the same time. Uh, if 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 to relate to the process of the writing, I would say that, that we kind of we, we shared different functions. Uh, I was responsible for creating the kind of a, the, the 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 main body of the script, so it means that I was like uh, working through through every scene and with with actions that are in the scenes, uh, also uh, with uh, also with some dialogue. Um, uh, but uh, my colleagues, and, and, and I think there were like, one of the colleagues, uh, Magali Negroni, she was more responsible for, for uh, drama dramaturgize the, the script. So she was working more with the conflicts. So she, she, she was, she, and also deepened the characters. So she found the, 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 the some, some, not only outer conflicts, but also inner conflicts of the of the characters that could be metaphorically or directly shown uh, in the film. Uh, while um, the other writer, uh, Tabitha Ruzate, she she was more responsible, maybe for because you know it's it's a pretty difficult for a male <laughs> person uh, to write. Uh, a female story, you, you know, like a, where the, the female character is a lead character. So she was like responsible also to creating kind of the personality of Maria and, and, and also the, 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 her development in the script. So yeah, so I think it was very fruitful. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's always a bit difficult when, uh, uh, when, um, uh, when there are different people writing but but when the in our case i was the writer and they were my advisors and then we would discuss like we would work for days just like coming together like whether uh, in pairs whether me with one of the uh, my colleagues or with the other and we would like then spend like two days of just going through the script like making notes uh, and then I would go home or, or just uh, uh, fly home because one of my, my colleagues, she, she's working in Paris. And, uh, and then I would just write. Then I would just write, taking account all the things that we have discussed. Uh. When you casting, uh, was casting the actors, did you, um, are there uh, theater actors in, in your movie or? But, uh, in Latvia, we have like we don't have like the kind of separate uh, um, acting traditions because we like all the actors. Um, they they are they are uh, studying as theater actors, but they are, of course they have some some film experience as well while while being students. So basically, they become both. And uh, uh, most of the actors in the film, they also have a, um, quite. Uh, um, developed theatrical career, so the, basically they have the experience. That's why also we let them to, for example, when we have the rehearsals in the film where the act actors are rehearsing. So there was a little bit like of an improvisational thing, not when when it was shot, but when it was rehearsed, we we let the uh, actors to 
show or to kind of recreate the rehearsal process as it is in the theater when they are working with in 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 particular uh, theatrical production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was it a problem that you need uh, many actors or a few actors who um, are um, speak uh, Russian and. Uh, yeah, so but, uh, that that is the one thing that, that uh, these, let's say, middle-aged people or middle-aged uh, actors in, in Latvia, they commonly speak Russian. So that's, that's, so it meant that it was not a problem for the casting to get actors who could speak both languages. And uh, so, but uh, at the same time, uh, uh, the, the main actress is... Uh, fully redubbed uh, because she she is a she is a Latvian actress but she's Russian speaking actress and uh, that's something I think a foreigner cannot uh, uh, hear but but she she if she would be the one to, to speak she would have the Latvian accent uh, it, when speaking in Latvian, she would have the Russian accent, but when speaking in Russian, she would have she would have a, this perfect Russian, you know, and uh, th that's why we we did uh, the opposite. We redubbed her with Latvian actress, uh, who was uh, who, who whose Russian is pretty good, but still you can hear the accent, while her Latvian doesn't have an accent. So. Okay, so she's fully dubbed. She's a fully dubbed, uh, and it was, uh, for me, it was kind of the first time uh, when I, because I, I, I'm, I'm, I like ADR, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty into ADR, I, I, I like working with actors in, uh, in Sun Studio, uh, but, but this, this was the first case when I had to do like the, the whole main character redub, and of course uh, it's, it's, it's hard because you need to have every breath, every uh, reaction, uh, 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 and uh, so it took us if I'm not mistaken, seven full days. So we were even like recording something and then coming back to some text before realizing that it's not anymore the voice that we are having a little bit further in the film. So it was like, it's a very long process, very hard process, but I think it, it was uh, worth it because I, I think it, even uh, uh, some of the uh, Latvians who know the fact that she is redubbed, they were watching the film and saying that we, they, they cannot say that she, she is uh, uh, redubbed. Yeah. Did you film a lot of uh, original locations or um, how was the location scouting or did you even recreate sets? I'm not really into kind of a set building because I always, I'm, I'm somehow feel the, the kind of artifice in the set, uh, uh, when the sets are being built. Mm, not so many cases, uh, at least in my, uh, my mind, where it works well. So basically we wanted to kind of define the, 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 the locations that would f fit our idea. Um, um, so we, we were like traveling all around Latvia to find different um, places that would in a way resemble uh, the Moscow and also the, the kind of uh, those uh, uh, both like theatrical buildings and also these governmental buildings uh, as they were in uh, Soviet Russia in 1930s. So that, that was uh, something. And, um, and I'm also, what, what for me is important, I'm, I'm more into um, uh, trying to find new locations because there are always these like locations that are being used like once, in a, uh, once again and once again. I'm trying to find new ones. Always, that is something that I give an assignment to myself when I'm making a film. And also, I think for me at least, it's, it's you, when, when, you go, uh, when you go location scouting, there are places that strikes you. You just go there and you can, wow. And it doesn't even maybe fit the narrative of the film, but you just think, wow, that's like something that, uh, that could work. And and that uh, and the, those locations, I always use them. I always like uh, I tell, okay, we will film here, even though it it's maybe not really fitting what we are we want in the film, but but because it's the, the lo location should have some kind of a, uh, a appeal of itself, not only that it uh, it's it's kind of a giving a space or a floor for the narrative. It should be somehow. Um, 
playing itself as well. Maybe you have uh, advice or a tip you want to give uh, like young aspiring directors. <laughs> Uh, to to film stories that only those stories that are, you are interested in. Uh, the thing is that uh, nowadays one of the biggest problems for the young filmmakers is that they because they want to fit into the system, they are uh, maybe trying to um, find subjects that are in a way actual or uh, or topical at at, the, at this particular moment. Of history, but uh, but uh, I I I think it shouldn't be the case. I think you should just make uh, films only about something that you are truly interested in. And if you are, for example, if you are interested only in yourself, then make a film about yourself. If you are interested in computer games, then make films about computer games. But don't make films about some kind of a you know like. Uh, larger uh, topical moral um, issues that that you are not, for example, concerned of, uh, because only because they are fitting some kind of a EU regulations or or, or some some other institutional uh, institutionalized ideas. So um, that that is my only advice. Otherwise, just be totally free. <laughs>